Hello and welcome to a weekly wind-up special with me, Dave Hodgson. Following a disastrous Euro 2016 campaign, the England squad have returned home or headed for holidays. Roy Hodgson has resigned from the position of manager in much the same ignominy as those that have preceded him for the past 20 years. I'm joined by Kyle Warwick, KLTV's resident football aficionado. So, Kyle, how do you feel the tournament went? Um, certainly, I think uh, overall the tournament's been very entertaining. It, uh, they always are a major football tournament for, for people like myself. It's uh, getting past the as you rightly said in, in the introduction to it, disastrous campaign for England. I think it's becoming the norm uh, for England supporters now to expect nothing and receive even less. Let's get down to basics then. Who do you think should replace Roy Hodgson? Uh, no relative, by the way. Probably, judging by the list of candidates that they, they say will get the job, I probably should throw my hat in the ring. I mean, they've... they've, they've so, uh, Chris Coleman's had to turn the job down, which the Welsh manager having to turn the job down just shows how out of touch the upper echelons of the FA actually are. Like I think, I think they saw the Welsh team, who um, unfortunately for them went out at the semi-finals, but they saw the passion and the the pride that those players put into it, and rather than thinking which Englishman can we get to do this job and uh, do the same for the England team? They thought, let's buy that guy <laughs> and get him to come and do the same for us. Never once crossing the mind thinking, he's Welsh. And it probably is because he's Welsh that he's so passionate about doing the Welsh job. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, but then other people in the frame as well, they, we, we seem to be inundated with, with uh, prospective foreign coaches which is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not going to go out there and say that it's a bad thing that it, uh, foreign managers being linked with the England job. I just think it's a sad state of affairs that we don't have, or it's perceived that we don't have the managers with the calibre to take over from Hodgson who are English. But for me, we've been going about things the, the wrong way anyway. So I think it's a, a time for a change of tact and I think it's time for somebody in the ilk of a, um, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but in the ilk of a Sam Allardyce or a, preferably an Alan Pardew who is a, a, a blood and fire Englishman, you know, and, and will not accept the kind of performances that came from the Slovakia game and that came out of the Iceland game. Those, those performances, Roy Hodgson was quite happy to talk about um, the tactical side of it and not getting too wound up for the games and people criticised Joe Hart for being fired up in the tunnel and shouting at players in the tunnel and I think that it's a ridiculous situation you know I think it's it, games when you get to those major tournaments are all about the mentality and we need somebody we have players with the talent we need somebody to come in and put the fire in the belly. And somebody like Sam Allardyce is going to come in and simplify things and say, right, you know, this is what we do well. And what we do well in England, really, when, when we succeed as, as club football teams and when we succeed as national football teams, it's be not necessarily because we are more skillful than the opposition. It's because we are more passionate. Playing for England is a feather in the cap that increases your advertising revenue as, a, as an England player. And there isn't that motivation once they've got there to, to necessarily... Uh, put 110% into playing for, for the England team. I, I can understand what you meant. Uh, and of course, I, I think it might be better to actually take a step back and get the sort of manager that fixes things with a metaphorical spanner than a metaphorical computer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, certainly that has become a, a massive part of the game as this, this uh, in-depth analysis of absolutely everything that goes on uh, it, with the players, you know, physicality and their, their health and everything's monitored whilst they're on the field and you can see how many passes they've made and you can see how many how much possession we've kept and all that data is broken down but ultimately all that data did nothing for us and I heard uh, Teddy Sheringham who 
this statement just goes to show that an intelligent footballer does not an intelligent person make. Exactly. Because Teddy Sheringham said that, you know, we we need somebody like Arsene Wenger, who was another foreign manager who was named, who, who of all managers, Arsene Wenger is somebody that I massively admire, but somebody that I believe will be completely wrong for the England squad set up. Yeah, yeah. They talk about, uh, Teddy Sheringham said, we need somebody to come in and teach us what to do. You know, we need to keep possession better and use the ball better in possession. And, and I thought, well, we had an average of 63% possession throughout the tournament having the ball wasn't the problem no, no. doing something with it was the problem and Arsene Wenger for the past 10 years has had football teams at Arsenal who keep the ball very well but do nothing with it yeah, yeah. he is not the answer he is an extenuation yeah. to our problems it's part of the old extension of that some players seem to think clocking up mileage is a good alternative to scoring a goal which of course it no, no possession, work. you know, you can have all the possession you want. If you don't put the ball in the back of the net, you're still not winning games. Yeah. OK, well, what do you think can be done to fix the national game? I mean, I have, I have heard talk of the national game being beyond repair, which is, is something that I would strongly refute. You've just got to look at how, how Spain developed footballers in the early uh, mid, to, mid to late 90s going into the 2000s and the domination that they put together. Look at the, the complete football in obscurity that the Belgium team have come out of and, and put together a, a team that now resides at number two in the world, that, which will probably change after the Euros, admittedly. But I don't believe it's beyond repair. Um, I, I, I am one for revolutionary fixes. I would dismantle the Premier League. Yeah. I think the Premier League is, is full of executives who siphon a lot of money off into, into clubs and into players' pockets and not enough of the money that is made from the Premier League comes yeah. down into grassroots. And you've just got to look at somebody like Iceland who were massively successful. They, have, they live in a country that is, is not perfect for football. And they're part-time players. But about, yeah. about 10 years ago, they invested something like 8 or 9% of their GDP for that year into football facilities, and they have some of the best football facilities across Europe. And now they're seeing the fruits of that. Whereas here, you have kids starting from four years old and playing all the way through their, their grassroots football career on pitches that are unsafe. And I know they're unsafe myself because I've torn my cruciate ligament going down a bobble on a football field. And everybody that plays locally can name four or five people that yeah. have been injured. And what I would do now is say, you're written off, you've had your chance. There might be one or two, maybe Harry Kane, um, because he's, he's going to be a, a deadly goal scorer. I wouldn't let him near a free kick again, but there you go. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then a few others that were on the periphery yeah. who I would keep around, but then I would pick... 18 to 19 champion, young championship players yep. between the ages of 19 to 23 and say to them your next two years are in the England team if you perform for us then there's every chance you'll be starting in a Premier League team by the end of yep. uh, the Russia yep. World Cup and I would just let them play through and let them prove themselves and it's built but, down from the ground up then, absolutely and then you've got players who are proving something rather than players who don't feel they have anything to mm. prove However large or small your business, attracting new customers requires dedication and a lot of patience. Just like fishing, but you also need the right gear. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, lures, tackle box, tackle bag, net, bait, gas gloves, clothes, and pocket knife lunch. Or you could simply advertise with KLTV. Online, grow your business and your clientele. KLTV. 
your vision made reality. Should have gone to KLTV. Uh, you mentioned the Championship League then, and I think it's pretty common knowledge around Huddersfield that you are a town fan. Uh, how do you feel uh, about their summer so far? I think it's been brilliant. I think um, uh, as a town fan, another one, being a town fan is very similar to being a, an England fan. You have, to, <laughs> you have to constantly prepare yourself for disappointment. And in recent years... Uh, certainly, you know, I, I remember when we were a, a, a Division One football team pressing to go into the Premier League. I remember when we were bottom of the of the football league with virtually no money, and uh, people were putting money in buckets just to keep the club going. So I do have a fairly balanced spectrum of uh, of things that have gone on with Huddersfield Town. I think where we are at the moment is about right, and what Wagner is doing is is building something. David Wagner and he, he, you could tell from last season his football it wasn't all there he hadn't had the time to really instill what he wanted into his players but you could tell the the workings were there and now he's had this summer where he's brought in some really promising talent really promising talent and I think for the first time in 10-15 years Huddersfield fans have something to really get excited about and I think that can be seen through the number of people that are taking up what is turning out to be a ridiculously cheap season ticket at £179. I think the people that have taken that option up are going to get their money's worth next season. So you reckon the management are going about it the right way? There? Absolutely. I think Dean Hoyle as well is coming for stick for, uh, for a few years with his policy of uh, buying and selling. But you've just got to look at the clubs that that's worked for. You've got to look at yeah. your West Broms, your Southamptons, who have all gone from championship yeah. clubs to yeah. being stable premiership in clubs. Fact, doing every, sorry. In fact, doing everything right that Leeds doesn't. Well, <laughs> um, I mean, my dad's a Leeds fan, so I, I get my fair share of Leeds, Huddersfield Town, Banter most of the time. But yes, exactly. We, we're being run well, and it's nice to be able to say that we are a well-run club. And, and Leeds definitely are not that. Thank you, Mr Chilino. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Carl, for all this time that you've put in today because we've recorded this on one of you, the busiest days on your incredibly busy week. I've been Dave Hodgson. Thank you so much for joining us and to the people who made this programme possible. Thanks, lads and lasses. Goodbye for now. Thank you.